Good morning, everyone. Hope you guys are doing well today. I just had one of my monitors stop working. So that means today we'll be working off one monitor, which is fine. Uh, but that just means I'm going to have to occasionally hide the screen just in case while I'm setting up things or moving things back and forth. But I hope you guys are doing well. Uh, last week on the stream, we ended up uh, making a which also means I'll have to kind of pop back and forth to see the chat, which will be kind of annoying. But uh, I will do my best to make it work for us today. Uh, last week on the stream, what we ended up doing, I don't know, just maybe we'll, we'll try this for a minute as I get this set up. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's see, let's see what you guys see. Here we go. This is our stream. Uh, all right, so last week what we did on the stream was we ended up uh, playing around in Wonderdraft, uh, which is a map making program. Just kind of having some fun with that. And we ended up also sculpting a character kind of based off the map, but more just a general uh, exploration of character. Uh, and we ended up kind of with this. And it, we, it wasn't actually, we were doing a randomly created character using what we've done in some of the previous weeks. And what I ended up doing was about halfway into that, um, we switched because I wasn't really digging it. And we kind of ended up making this character here. Uh, I don't know if I can hide this any further. It seems to be like the smallest it wants to go. But maybe we'll switch it over at some point the life of having one monitor right uh we will switch it at some point when we get into the into the flow and so one of the conversations or one of the, the comments in chat today or last week was about maybe taking this a little bit further and not just taking it a little bit further but but showing the process of how what we would do is expanding on this character we i found this character that we kind of said was sort of a spider queen of some type and i thought it might be a fun thing since now we are in october to do something sort of spooky halloween themed and kind of follow that for the next several streams so the next four streams we'll take this character and we'll expand on it and continue that but i'm going to show you the creative process that i'm going to go through that would basically be um you know taking this to a final character, taking this to a final illustration. So today what we're going to do is we're going to show a little bit of um, reference gathering. We're going to do some reference gathering and then we're going to take that and we're going to build some mood boards and we're going to start applying this to the sculpture uh, and design later on. Uh, one thing that you'll notice, like if I come in here and I show everything, right? This is the body that we had started on. It's now split into several pieces. It doesn't fit the character at all. It doesn't take it in any way. And that it's frankly, that's this is all we really have to work with at this point. So the way I like to think of this is sort of like a sketch, right? This is much like a napkin sketch, a 2D sketch. I spent an hour, a couple hours and minutes, whatever, sketching in an idea and saying there's, there's elements here that I that I do like and there's elements here that I don't like. So how can I take them and expand on them? So the first thing we're going to do today is get some reference. So the obvious things that we can do, I'm going to pull up, uh, you know, Google. Uh, oh, by the way, I don't know if you guys saw this, uh, but Nomen, uh, the Rookies, which is a uh, ranking of schools basically around the world, uh, they announced uh, last night, about 30 minutes ago when I opened this, uh, the top 50 creative schools, top visual effects schools, top animation schools, and top two, top 2D schools, all these. Uh, but Nomen very excited to show you guys that this is the top 50 creative and media schools in the world for 2020 nomen ranked number one so that's amazing super excited to hear that also with visual effects schools this is the best visual effects schools in 2020 nomen also ranked number one we also ranked number two in the best animation and we also ranked number three in game design so super excited to be you know at the top of several of those especially the top 50 very very happy with that that's amazing so feels good feels good man um so today aside from that which the we're very excited about you know seeing this uh we're gonna do some cool stuff today i'm excited so if you guys have questions if this uh, chat in the side is bothering you guys or it's not 
worth you guys seeing. I am happy to, you know, full screen after a while and make it go away. Uh, you know, I can't really adjust the stream. This is my stream setup. You'll see that it kind of is hard to do right now uh, if I move this around. So we'll have to figure some of this out. All right. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to open up a new tab at Google and we're going to go to Pinterest. I have Photoshop open in the background so we can start grabbing a bunch of stuff here, right? So we can come in here and say, create new. I usually just use a eight and a half by 11 paper, just in case you ever wanted to print it. It's kind of nice for that. And then I'll also do a uh, rotate the image sideways and I'll invert it so that the background is black just so it doesn't burn out my eyeballs and we'll continue. We got this going. Now you can use a Pinterest board. You can use all kinds of things that you like. The The one thing caveat that I will say about Pinterest, and you'll probably see it relatively quickly, is um, you're going to see a lot of the same stuff. So I'm, if I type in, and first off, you never want to type off like exactly what you want to find. Like if I search spider queen, you're probably going to find a bunch of cool things that say spider queen. Right, that's kind of the idea. Uh, that's our that's our high level pitch, but that's not necessarily the character we want to make. And there's some cool elements in here, but frankly, I'm kind of trying to hide my eyes right now because I don't want to be super inspired by one of those. So I might just say like spider webs, and let's start with spider webs. And now we're going to get some interesting shapes, and I'm going to start gathering some of this. But this is all very, to be frank, it's Pinteresty, right? We're finding stuff that is not necessarily going to be. Um, Everybody else is looking at this, right? Pinterest is a, is a great, is a really, really great tool for um, research. But note that it's a, it's like a library that everybody has access to. And the keywords that they're going to search for, like even if I turn it down to spider. So by the way, if you have arachnophobia, you're going to have trouble with this next stream or several streams. Uh, but, you know, if I start searching for this, there's some cool things in here, but everybody else is looking at it. So what I'm looking for here is shape inspiration. And I'm looking for potential things like this. Like I'm going to make a new board here. So I'm going to take this one, create a new board. SQ, Spider Queen, create. And we got one there. Build the Butcher showing up again. For some reason, I hit back. Spider webs, spider Searching again. Thank you for the privacy laws. Just putting that right in my face. Looks like Pinterest is having some trouble. There we go. I kind of like these colors, so I'm going to put that there. This stuff, not not really interested in this right now. We'll find better reference for all this. Even like Black Widow shapes, that's not super interesting to me. Uh, this one that I saw was down here before was interesting. This is interesting to me. This is CG. I try not to take other people's artwork if possible. Uh, I like it to be uh, something that feels like uh, nature. Nature's a great designer. We don't need to try to take other people's inspirations if we don't have to some cool elements in here. So I'm taking obviously some pictures of spiders. That's going to be kind of a, a no brainer for this. The sun is beating down on my back because we don't have a shade. So I might start sweating here soon, which will be exciting. There was one that I saw that was kind of cool, but I can't seem to find it now. Interesting shapes here. So Pinterest boards are great. They're, the best thing about them is that they're easy to do, right? You go into a web page, you type the word you want, and voila, you get some cool pictures. But again, the one caveat is that everybody's also looking at these. Um, so what I'm probably going to do here in a minute is try to find some inspiration outside of this. We can obviously use Google, and we will do that later today. Uh, but the first thing that I would actually want us to do is find something from a book. And part of the reason I want to do that is not just so it's, you know, we're finding, you know, we'll go to Google, we'll search like spider web, web types, 
probably a page that says how to recognize a spider by its webs. We can probably find some interesting inspiration. Even this picture is better than many of the other ones I've seen. Thank you. Orb web. So it was an orb weaver. Tangled webs. All right, so what we'll be able to do is kind of take some of this and find what kind of character are we looking for? Is Are we wanting to have something that's got a pattern to it, something that's very chaotic to it, something that's got a somewhat of a pattern to it? Sheets, funnels, all these kind of things are interesting. And we don't have to do them all, right, but we can do a couple of them. So I kind of like the sheet web, the funnel web, and the orb weaver web, which I think is cool. Uh, with what we've already got here, there's sort of when we had been talking about this last week there's sort of this little bit of like um elegance to the design it's sort of this re repetitive repetition pattern and that's what i want to really bring back to this so uh what we're going to do is i'm going to bring over our stream yard and, and uh, turn off this which means you're going to lose the music by the way but you're just going to see me for a minute i'm going to come over here i'm going to grab a book you guys obviously can't see the inside of the book while I'm doing this, but I will find some pages and show them to you once I get them. So this is a book called Atlas Obscura, which is an amazing book that you should take a look at. It's pretty hefty. I've shown it before. Um, but what I recommend with this book is because, because what we're doing right now is we're creating a character, and I don't just want to create a character. I want to also maybe get into some of the world building where are they from, who are they, what their inspirations are, what their setting is, because that's going to play a lot into this. So I'm just going to, literally, I'm just doing this. Pick a page. And we're going to start searching through some of this stuff. You can obviously go through any of these, and uh, I'll end up showing you some photos here. But for example, here's a some interesting shapes in some of these places. This is a, a lab. Okay, okay. Here's some cool stuff. So like, this is a photo that I wouldn't necessarily have come across looking for this, right? Um, in Pinterest, right? There's some really interesting elements here and they do somewhat tie into our thing. So I'll either tag these as a, you know, I'll put a little sticky note in them. I'll take a photo of them on my phone. Um, but there's all kinds of cool stuff in here from statues to sculptures to natural locations to to things, right? And that's kind of what we're looking for. So I'm going to quickly flip through some of this and see uh, if I find anything just visually that's that fits my my inspiration or, or triggers something. And um, the reason that I like doing this, aside from you know, looking through books and getting away from the computer, which is incredibly valuable, is to me, it's a lot like listening to music on the radio or, or Spotify's Discover Weekly or somebody else giving you information in a way that you wouldn't necessarily expect. Is that if you don't know a book terribly well or you don't know, you know something and it's just presented to you, you might see something that is totally unexpected that you had never expected to see um and so even like right here i found this this cave this is a really interesting thing for me so i'm going to take a photo of this and uh i'm going to put it on my phone and we'll get it in but this to me is saying like oh if we're talking about you know how where is this location at maybe this location is said is it by the water is it in the desert is it a forest is it you know what what is the actual location Just rip the page. No thanks. Uh, you know what is what is this place? Where is this place? And it gives just kind of gives you a little bit of inspiration that you can find very, very quickly. I realize I should have just slipped from the beginning of the book, but I wanted to start in the middle in case there was anything interesting. I'm taking a photo of this that I will show you guys. So we've got this picture that I, I like quite a bit. It's sort of that elegance. It doesn't necessary and this is part of the, the you know the process that i go through with a lot of characters is i'm looking for something that's not not necessarily the the things you would expect i'm not going to just say oh you know tro uh, the trope of spider exactly what i did in pinterest like going straight to pinterest and saying spider uh will get you reference absolutely um but it's not going to 
get you something necessarily unique. That's what everybody else, if they are on a rush or, you know, that's what they're going to try to find. Ooh, this is a cool one. So I love this kind of, it's kind of going with the Halloween theme where somebody in the chat had said like, um, Hellboy, like this could be a character that lives in the Hellboy universe. Definitely dig that. So I'm going to take a photo of this. I know you guys are seeing like the top of my head and hat. So I'm going to try to make it a little more engaging that you can actually look at me as I look at this book. But this is a, a really great way. Isolated monks of Mount Athos. Interesting. So we're kind of looking for some random locations. So this is the one that I just took a photo of. And I'm going to take these, I'll send them to myself, find a way to try to do that probably off screen, and I'll put them in Pinterest, or I'll put them in Photoshop so we can make our own boards uh, during the stream. Ooh, this is a super cool one. Now, this is a shot that's a top-down of a location, but one thing that uh, I'm in having a conversations with some good designers, one of them uh, that I remember very vividly having with was Ian McCaig. And Ian uh, is a, just a master in general of design. But what he uh, had said, and we'll talk about this later, is is taking something and flipping it. Just because it's an image that looks like this is top down, that doesn't have to be, right? It can be upside down, it can be horizontal, it can be vertical, it be, can be all different types of ways. And uh, you can use anything in any, in any way, shape or form, right? So, you know, you can take a photo of a mountain range and flip it upside down and that could become the top of a cavern. So trying to look at, at inspiration, looking at photos, looking at pictures, looking at things on Pinterest, uh, not just for what they look like from a visual perspective, but for what they could appear to be. Like this is a really interesting place, this canyon, for example. And you guys are starting to see as I get this uh, my inspirations are coming to a uh, similar style and that's intentional i have a, a general idea of what i'm kind of wanting and that's coming from the repetition of shape that's coming from um you know general sort of spidery themes that we've talked about kind of spooky themes but we're, we're kind of looking for something well we're not really looking for something we're looking for things to show up and, and kind of pique our interest Oh yeah, see like here's a couple ones. This is sort of like a couple of tree houses. Each of those you can kind of see could have an interesting appearance there. So I'm gonna take a picture of this one on the far right and the one on the left. Okay. And we're gonna go a little bit faster because we're almost getting to the point where I'm sure you guys are getting bored of watching me scroll through a book um but that's probably good enough from the book oh interesting this is called the dreamer's gate i don't know exactly what that is but that's creepy and i like it so we're going to take that it's in south wales all right i'm gonna put this back we can see if real quickly if we've got anything else if you're also a fan of you know uh, I got some books back here, Miss of Avalon. If you're kind of fans of different types of things, I really recommend having those up uh, or around. Uh, I also sometimes will just have books of photos. I'll have comic books. I'll have all different types of things. Uh, I'm going to try to get, see if my cord will reach here. This one is out of range. But this is like the national parks of the U.S. We'll see if there's something interesting in here. It's mostly an illustrated illustrated illustration book but there's some cool tones maybe we could take in this and not everything is going to give you you know exactly what you want uh right away maybe you flip through a book and there's nothing in there or there's something that you're not you're not super interested in and that's totally fine do i recommend any character designing book oh that's a good question uh, character designing book. Um, 
I'm just kind of looking around at my shelf right now. For specific character design, I don't necessarily recommend one specific book. Uh, I think I have some of them at my office at work, or I've loaned them out, which is something I tend to do. For figure drawing, the one that I really recommend is Michael Hampton's figure drawing uh, and a book, which is a really, really good book. Um, and then there's, you know, if you're interested in sculpting, I can give you recommendations for that or figure drawing. Oh, this is Michael Hampton's book. I had not loaned it out yet. Uh, this is Michael Hampton's book, which is a good figure drawing book, figure drawing and invention, design and invention. Uh, this is more about creating actual characters and figure drawing and stuff like that, but it's really, really good for that, uh, which I highly recommend. That's a great way to start, um, to start kind of like from really good fundamentals, but be able to make something pretty interesting. Um, I'm trying to think if there's something that I could look through from uh, one of my comic books or something like that, that would be a fun inspiration rather than just kind of scrolling through Pinterest, which is fine. Like I said, you know, scrolling through Pinterest and doing that kind of stuff is always great, uh, but it's just not, not the same as looking through books. We have a bunch of travel books that I'm looking at here. We'll probably just stick with what we've got, though. Oh, Dune. Dune got pushed again, as I'm sure most of you are all aware of. If you had to use one reference book for the rest of your life, what would it be? I really like Atlas Obscura. I think it's a really solid book. Um, you know, I think it's one of those ones where uh, you can kind of just use it for a really long time. Um it's it's just great for that there's no it's so many different places and it covers people and it covers all different kinds of things right it's not just like one thing so i think that's where it's really good uh it's, it's really excellent at that all right i'm gonna take these photos i'm sending them to myself so apologies for looking at my phone i will send them to myself via email, I guess. Okay, apparently that was too large. All right, that's sending. Sorry, you guys you can't see me. Uh, doing the things that I'm doing right now, but that's somewhat intentional. Because um, I, I, in case you are just joining, uh, one of my monitors decided to stop working uh, right before the stream, uh, which is the monitor that I normally work on or primarily work on. So uh, we're kind of having to, to work around that thing right now. All right, it should be being delivered any moment. Any sci-fi you like and love, you love a lot of, uh, any sci-fi you like and I have a lot of mech design. Um, I have a lot of art books and a lot of the art books that I have, you know, actually, I'm going to mute myself real quick so I can walk off screen so I can actually show you guys because uh, I'll grab a, a quick selection of books that are over on another side of the house. So one memento.
Okay, that should be unmuted. Um, here we go. Uh, a couple books that I grabbed that are just random reference books from around um, my house is going to be, uh, sorry, just making sure that this download of photos is downloaded so I can make sure they work. And then we'll get them into Photoshop and we can actually get back to showing screens relatively quickly rather than you having to look at my face. Bring them all in Photoshop. Cool. All right, back to where we were talking about some books that I had brought over. Uh, this There's a bunch of these that you can find, but this is Medieval Costumes, uh, Armor and Weapons. This is a book that's full of uh, different, some of them are relatively simple and graphic, right? And they're not really highly detailed. But what I love about this is that it allows you as a designer to take something and break it uh, take it and break it or manipulate it into something that's completely different, but using the same um, graphical shapes. So as you see on here, it almost feels like it's just a, it is just a pen, pen and ink drawing. It's not going into uh, every detail and how it's made, right? But it goes to peasants' clothes. It goes to all different types of plates to women's clothes. Um, and it kind of gives you a, a little bit of a history of some of that stuff which I think is awesome. It also gives you some crests and weapons and sizes and shapes of this kind of stuff and gives you reasonings for that. And so this is one that I use quite a bit because it's more um, functional in a way that where it's not specifically, um, it's not specifically exactly like the high detail shot that you might be looking for something, but if you're looking to design something, it, it breaks it down. Uh, if you want the opposite version of that, you want something like this, which is Weapons and Illustrated History. There's tons of these types of books, whether it's for medieval stuff or all kinds of things. But this is going to be a, a book that shows you, uh, I'll find a better photo than the one I just flipped to, but weapons and guns and stuff that have extremely high level of detail, right? Uh, and they kind of explain what they're for and what they do and all that, which is great. So this is kind of a counterpart to that, to saying, you know, if I want something with a lot of detail, maybe this is what I'm going to look for. And this is actually probably what I'll be using in this uh, project that we're using. So one thing to note about this is I don't necessarily, like you were seeing over there with the book that's right here. This book. Um, is that that book I'm using more as like almost a template where I'm taking something and breaking it apart if I want to call back to an iconic shape. Uh, these books that I use, I don't use them in the same way. Meaning, if I'm going to create a sword like this, and this is the handle that I'm going to make or something, I'm not using this book to say, this is the sword I want to make, unless that's specifically what the uh, project is, right, to make a sword or make something like that. What I'm doing is I'm looking at this, and let me, let's say I'm using this one right here for, as an instance, focus, focus. Um, I love these shapes. I love the filigree. I love the pattern. I love the contrast of the black and kind of the bronze against that. That I'll use on something else. That may be armor. That may, may be a chest plate. It may be a headpiece. It may be a brooch. It may be a, a mask, right, for somebody. I'm using this as inspiration for something entirely different, not for exactly what it's being used as in the, in the photo. Um, and you can do that across all different types of things. Right, so whether it's even just the combination of the materials that are being used, the woods and the burnished uh, metals and all that kind of stuff, and or maybe how something functions, or there's so many different ways that you can look through this kind of stuff. So, you know, I love this shape right here. This is not for our project, but how this gun has all these holes kind of built into it, and that the type of machining that is used on that, those relatively simple shapes, but the details that are put inside them. So all this kind of stuff is a great book for, for reference of shapes and details that you wouldn't necessarily find somewhere else. Uh, continuing down that line a little bit, this is another one that's very similar to uh, Atlas Obscura, but this is Natural, the Cabinet. Cabinet of Natural Curiosities. Um, this is a really, really good book that I recommend, which is very similar, but it's more illustrated plates, right? So you're going to get all kinds of different things in here that are illustrations and plates of snakes and, and animals and all kinds of cool stuff. This is a heavy book, so I'm not going to try to hold this one up for you guys. 
as you can tell. Uh, but there's all kinds of really cool, interesting plates. For example, we just happened to open up on a bunch of crabs. Right, so if I'm looking for nature design and shapes and repetition and symmetry, which I happen to be for this project, this is a really good uh, image for me for, to use as reference. So I will be taking a photo of this when I get it out of the sunlight, which is seemingly being difficult. So, boom. So with that, I'm going to just flip a couple pages and see what else is in here. There's some more crabs in here. Like I said, this book is quite heavy so i'm not going to show you every single element of it uh, it's also really large which is amazing the plates are great they're beautiful i love so what i'm seeing right here is you know obviously another with our project spiders another akin to spiders is crabs but this is amazing beautiful stuff underwater style like that so we might be able to bring in some more aquatic reference that we wouldn't have necessarily thought about right away except when i flip this book up and i'm like oh hey there's some really cool stuff going on with this with these crabs and these spiky crabs and this like almost like this brainy like shell that's kind of going on so i'm taking a bunch of photos of those right now which i'll be sending over oh look at this beautiful illustration of this puffer fish awesome stuff super cool stuff so this is the uh cabinet of natural curiosities there's a bunch of shells in here which are great guess you could somebody says guess you could take your camera to the national history museum and get lots of ref there yes 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 whenever i go traveling whenever i go to a location i'm often taking photos that i don't actually of the places of the things but not not for you know um not because i'm trying to recreate or remember the memory that's a portion of it of course but more because i'm getting reference for a project or for future projects or just getting interesting photos for the for later right like i love that kind of stuff i think it's great um all right seeing if there's anything in here i found some cool photos so now i'm like oh i should be using i should be using this book for this project so i'm gonna put this back here oh you can see it's a hefty book all right, that's the natural curiosities. We'll go into two more books, which are not necessarily things, and then we will continue with our project today. Uh, but yeah, before I do that, I'm going to send my photos to myself, like I said I would, so that we could see them in our project. So we'll do that one more time. Apologies for the delay. The next books that we're going to look at are going to be uh, more about painting, lighting, and uh, good books for cinematography. So if you're interested in framing, if you're interested in composition, all that stuff, first off for painting and light and mood, this is probably one of the best books that's ever been made, Color and Light, A Realistic Guide, or a Guide to Realistic uh, Painting by James Gurney. This is a really, really, really good book. I recommend getting this. There's two of these by him. Um, but inside it's all kinds of different beautiful illustrations, but he also talks about painting at its core subjects. You could probably learn, you know, if you, it's a little dense sometimes, but in the end, to be frank, the illustrations are beautiful enough that it can actually be distracting. Uh, but there's a lot of really good stuff in here, so I recommend you checking this out for painting uh, mood style explanations of of things that are you know he's talking about you know colors underwater he's talking about water reflection and transparency and trying to break down how that works and what that looks like when you're painting it so this is a book that i super highly recommend for when it comes to you making your final illustrations or painting traditionally it's a really excellent book and then last up for cinematography uh framed ink which is a very uh if you've probably seen this one before it looks like this uh, drawing and composition for visual storytellers uh, this is a really really excellent book that goes through uh, cinematography and breaks down you know still images framing type types of framing names of framing uh, being able to use you know just the general mood and composition mood and composition in uh, 
different lighting and different types of setups to create different moods and varieties. So this is a really excellent book, uh, not just for design and cinematography, but just also for understanding you know, how a film is communicating to you. It's a really great book for that. Really, really good book for that. So super highly recommended. They also have stuff about silhouette and character design in this as well. So there are good things in here aside from that. And they, you know, how it plays into the story. If you want to tell a story, if you're interested in comic books, if you're interested in that, super highly recommend a book as well. So those are probably my key ones that I would uh, that I would recommend for everybody. Um, so somebody had asked in the chat, in case you're just joining, what is, uh, you know, if you had one reference book, Natural Curiosities is great. Atlas Obscura is great. Um, you know, especially if I was, I don't know. I think I would probably choose Atlas just because Atlas is a little bit more broad, meaning it has environments and locations rather than just, uh, you know, the other things that we've been looking at, just animals, just plates, just anatomy, right? So that's kind of why I think I would pick something like that. All right, I have downloaded my two things. I have got them into Photoshop. And we're going to start making our mood board here in a little bit. And I will get rid of all this stuff so you don't have to see, see me sharing screen or my face, just my face for too much longer. All right, let's see. I just have to figure out where I am on the internet. Okay, so we were here. Whoa. We were here. We were looking at spiders. We were looking at all kinds of stuff. Here's our chat. Got a couple questions in the chat. Uh, have I worked on any games? Uh, yes, I have worked on Uncharted 3, and I've also worked at, uh, on Star Citizen, uh, and I guess which also means Squadron 42 uh, at Cloud Imperium Games. I was an art director there for about three years, uh, and I was I worked at uh, Naughty Dog for at the end and during crunch of Uncharted 3. Um, let's see, do you do it? Does a three D artist need a college degree to get a job in the industry? No, uh, no, they do not. Uh, you, it's the arts are all about um, visual, right? It's really the most important thing. Uh, have I worked on any movies? Yes, I've worked on many movies. This is my uh, portfolio. For those of you who've never tuned into an art jam or are curious about who I am, uh, my name is Josh Herman. I'm the CCO of Nomen, but I've also I'm an alum of Nomen, and I've also uh, worked on many movies. These are some of my projects that I've worked on, my professional portfolio. So, Real Steel, Total Recall, The Avengers, Iron Man three, uh, basically every Aven every MCU movie from Avengers one uh, here to Avengers Endgame, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, doing character design uh, for characters, doing. All different types of things um, and then working on uh, Star Citizen as well as an art director for a uh, character artist designer for all kinds of stuff so yes I definitely have worked on a lot of movies worked on games worked on collectibles worked on commercials worked on a, a whole different selection of things yes for sure so if you have any questions regarding um, industry experience and just you know working in the industry uh doing all that kind of stuff uh, i am happy to help all right so what i've got so far i'm going to open up photoshop for y'all uh go ahead and please if i saw i saw a couple questions coming in uh, these are some of the photos that i took uh, if you have questions stockpile them we will uh get back to them shortly and we'll start getting that together. So I just resized all these images very roughly. I don't need them to be massive and or full size. I'm also going to rasterize them all right now because they came in as smart objects. Select and we'll start auto selecting the layer. I'm going to quickly mask out the areas that I want and then delete the areas that I don't want. If I see something like this, I'm going to quickly spin it, gather my own reference. And this is something you should do on every project. 
every project you should have a mood board you should have a general idea of what you're doing this is not something that we necessarily do a lot on our jam because it does take some time uh, you know to get this going Get this moving. There's just a bunch of cool shapes on these crabs. I love that image. Last of the crabs. Feathering. For some reason, I keep hitting V into feathering instead of going into the move, which is quite annoying. All right. So maybe we'll take these two. We'll size these down because they're not. Uh, one thing I do on my mood boards and stuff is I do size things. There's a bunch of other programs for this, by the way. Photoshop is just the easiest one for us right now. Uh, I size things to be kind of a visual interest, meaning what do I want to be looking at first? What do I really want to be paying attention to? Some of the stuff from Atlas Obscura. So these, once we get into these a little bit more, um, I'll give you guys a quick explanation about what I was talking about with taking a reference photo or taking a general photo and uh, flipping it and using that as the inspiration. Even some of this I might just take and you know adjust the perspective, try to flatten it out a little more so it's more you take photos of your own stuff, you know, you gotta curate it a little bit. I love this photo, this is a super cool one. Oops. So this is one, we'll do some quick compositions, but that's the one I want to use as an example. This one's cool as is, so I'm going to scale that down. I like the vibe of this one quite a bit. The different images I'm using for different things, it's not always about just design, right? It's not always just about what something should look like, meaning I'm using the filigree from this and using the tone from this you know it's it's actually very rarely about that specific of a thing for me it is about feeling sometimes so this one for me is a big feeling so i want to keep that one relatively large and this one for me is about details details and repetition and shape and i want to keep that alive oh some of these things around clipping now this is a cool one I really dig this this one I can probably make a little smaller some shapes over here Quite a bit, and this one is cool as well. But I don't think I actually like that one anymore, so I'm going to delete it. This one back. The orientation of that, and there we go. So that's what we got so far. With all of our stuff, I want to do one quick thing. I'm just going to group this. And say this just will say it's like our initial breath. I'm gonna save our project. Say, just put it here. Yeah. Cool. Uh, we've got a question already, or a couple questions. Uh, can I talk about understanding a silhouette and how to train our eye? Yeah, we'll get into that. And do companies in the industry take pitched concepts and ideas from freelancers, or is it always in house? 
Uh, you're talking more about studios. Studios will take pitched concepts um, from somebody, a person, a, a product production company that creates IPs. Uh, you know, you're trying to sell something to, to Netflix. Yeah. Um, but if you are working at a big company, they're doing that in-house. So it's both, actually. So one of the things I was talking about earlier with this is there's uh, taking something and flipping it. It can be a cool idea. So just we're going to maximize this for a sec. We're going to take a couple of these. right? And uh, I'm going to duplicate them. I'm going to go into F7, which is layers, duplicate this layer, get it outside of here. We're going to do this very quickly with a couple of these. So that's one I want. This is another one I want. And this can be a cool one. I'm not going to duplicate the whole group because otherwise it'll duplicate all of them. And we'll try it with this one as well. So just some fun ideas. A good design exercise for you and also a great idea for... Um, Just to play around is take images take photos you can take any photo if you want i can take one right now i'll take a photo right now uh i'll be right back one sec i'll show you guys what i'm gonna do i'm gonna take i see a plant over here that i'm gonna take a photo of I was muted, sorry. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna download that again very, very quickly. and kind of give you guys a little bit more of a, how you can use this, not just from photos uh, that you find online, but also to anything that you you know find could be anything you find, anything you take. Uh, could, because there was a question, not really a question, but there was a uh, comment about you know going to the museum, taking photos. And this is something that works for everything. So it's not just, you know, find on the internet. You can make your own reference. All right. This is the photo I took. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just rotate this and size it down. We don't need to do a massive thing. We're going to sketch some thumbnails here really quickly. Get my mouse out of the way. Take some of these and just kind of push them around. Make a new layer on top. I'm going to take this one first. Actually, this is the one I really wanted to paint on. So we're going to work on this first. And uh, I'm going to isolate it at the top. I should rasterize this image put this on top this is a blank layer i always blank uh if i'm going to paint on something i make it red so we're going to hide all these we'll just say like scale it up we'll get out our paintbrush don't need to use a fancy brush we'll just use a uh, hard round I'm going to give it a little squish, a little angle, so it kind of has a, a style that looks like this. A little on the hardness, bring that down, and then I might bring the opacity just subtly down as well. So my brush kind of looks like this, but I can draw over it several times. All right now what I can do is I can just color pick from this, and I can obviously draw. But this is a photo, right, of somebody shooting down on something. But in reality, what I was really digging was this spiral shape. And, and I'm going to remove some of these people in it. So I'm just going to quickly paint them out. Just grabbing, color picking, pulling down Alt to color pick. Remove that person out of the frame. And I was thinking that this could be really awesome. I'll use this as a tool to start building on this. 
and I'm just kind of tapping this. Sampling from the bottom. Again, this is a sketch. This is not a final illustration. This isn't really even a photo bash. This is just like, here's something that you could do. And it's a nice way to break up your process, right? If I can take this section here, I can copy it. I can paste it. I can move it. And we'll say, this is kind of interesting. Let's continue this. I make my eraser a large round brush so that I can erase pieces of this. All right, so I can keep some of this in here. Definitely want to bring up my opacity quite a bit as I have that stuff there. Maybe that goes behind there. Yep. Duplicate the horizontal put it here. I'm going to put it over this for a little bit so we can kind of move this. I want to get rid of this. Those white bars don't need to be here. The actual photo itself. Maybe we'll just kind of bring in some of this texture. So what you see I'm kind of doing is I'm basically taking the image that we had and I'm just building off of it with some stuff that I've already found uh, at this point. And then I'll take a layer on top and let's just do, we'll do like a, a size. We'll do a fixed ratio. We'll do uh, 16 by nine maybe. So width 16, height nine. That will give us a box that is this big. I can move said box around. Make a new layer, mask, I guess. Button. Invert my mask, which is basically gonna let me create a cinematic frame. Now I'm painting within the layer underneath that. off that mask for just a little bit to kind of stretch some of this and fix some of these little areas here. I want to see where we are. Turn it off. You can also just do this move, select it, copy it, paste it, copy paste. Taking that so far. Trying to fill up this frame so I don't have too far to go. So there we go. We've got a lot of this so far. I got a couple things I just want to fill here. This is not intending to be a beautiful illustration. This is not what I'm trying to do. But what I'm doing is you know, showing that from an initial reference photo, which I'll grab out of here as I group all this. Put this back on the top. This is our photo that we're using, right? So you can obviously get a sense of what we, what we got going here. And what I'm, I'm just going to scale this one down. 
Now we've obviously just mostly spent our time expanding this. Is fine. And now what I can do is I can take just painting, right? I'll make another red layer. Red again for me is paint. Just start painting some areas in and or, and or out. So I'm going to remove the idea that these are steps. I think it's cool that they're steps. I think it's an awesome image, but for me, it's turning it into or making it very clear that it is something that you walk down. But I do love the idea of this sort of concentric ring that you go down. So I want to kind of connect that. And down here, we got this kind of light. And so I'm going to maybe take this, change my brush to like a round, make like a soft light layer or something. that in there overlay switch to uh, I like some of these cloud brushes which I think this is kind of what this is I don't have most of my brushes here. And these are smudge brushes. So we'll just use this. That's fine. So maybe we'll coat this with fog. Wish I had my brushes. And then if we were wanting to do spider webby stuff, which we were kind of talking about. Where would they be? Maybe there's some sort of... Um, like the idea of almost maybe within here, there could be stuff. But if you looked at some of those images, this is where I might go back to our Pinterest. Try to find funnel web. This look. Well, this is pretty interesting. We can even just copy it. Obviously, copying an image, you know, putting it in and stuff like that. This is getting into photo bash territory. If you do this, you're obviously not supposed to make any money off of it. And there's, there's concerns there for sure of not of, of that, but to kind of get the idea, we could kind of, you know, take this, put it a little further back. And as a mood painting, or at least as a starting point for maybe a sketch, uh, this could be, I don't like that in there. This could be a thing that we start looking at for inspiration. It can be a thing that we start looking at to say like, what do we, how do we want this to go? Is this a direction that we want this to go? Uh, you know, I want to like maybe paint around in here. Last one gone, there we go. You know, I could be painting around in here saying there's all kinds of stuff in here. It could be interesting. Maybe we change the, right now the light direction is kind of coming from everywhere. So we would need to kind of adjust that. But is this a general direction that we're interested in all from this? So, and you know, we can even put in a um, person or the classic thing that you see a lot is like a man, a stick man. Like, oh, there's a, we we'll use this color. Person. 
terribly well drawn person, but you kind of get the point that they're in there. That's the scale of somebody. Maybe they're this tall. And there's other stuff in there. Maybe we could do that there were spiders or something coming out of the walls, right? Or there's these big shapes maybe that could be coming off of this when we start getting into the actual design of the space so they come out of these holes and there's these really large we talked about like concentric patterns and symmetry is maybe something we want to play with so connecting these idea And I use this as a way to flesh out ideas and not just flesh out ideas, but kind of think about ideas, right? Like think about, is this a direction that I want to go with this thing, right? And I'm using this reference, the reference that I had gathered up here uh, is specifically being used for this to understand maybe there's an idea of a space that they could be in, that this is where they live. And if this is where they live, uh, how can we tie that into the environment? So it's kind of an idea of that. Now, like I said before, you could do this with any of these images, right? So this is the one that we used here. So I'll group that into its own smaller group and hide that. You could do it to any of these images. So this image here, I'm not going to spend as much time painting on these, but we could just do something as simple as flipping it vertically. Not necessarily painting that, but now what does this feel like? right what if we take an image like this and we do the same thing we flip this vertically what does that feel like now oh okay this to me now feels like uh there's almost this feeling of like we will take some of this and just painting obviously very roughly i'm going to paint out a lot of this make a new layer paint only inside this image Right, there's sort of this upward motion that I like of this. Send a link to the playlist, yeah, I'll send it. Uh, I don't know if I can send a link, but I can uh, show you guys on Spotify. It's just a royalty free playlist. Uh, copyright free music 2020 by Sam's Sandal Shop. They're not sponsored by Sam's Sandal Shop. This could be like an element of something, right? Maybe it's, this is where you can also come in and just start changing everything. So you kind of come in here, uh, change the, the tone of something, change the idea of something, and see if it inspires you for something, right? Same with this, same with this. So this one I kind of liked going this direction. And it was very similar to what I was thinking about before was I love this idea of these rings. Maybe there's more white in here. So I'm going to put that in there. We have this white kind of coating everything. And this area down here is the floor. Maybe this can kind of be almost snowy and there's like a blues like the outside of a cave or the sky or something over here and this is a, a shape maybe that we're going to play with and this can kind of be spattered around down here because it would be concentric this is where like the snow fall from the top of this cave thing it's just sky we'll take some of these darker tones and we'll say like maybe there's a couple little holes in here similar to what we were saying before that idea of this sort of concentric area i'll zoom in for you guys um going to a little darker colors in here color picking from the image so i'm choosing things that are specifically going to kind of tie in and again this is not supposed to be 
the final image. This is exploration of, oh, this could be an interesting shape. This is an interesting idea. It's like photo bash in a way, uh, but it's, you know, it's not. It's taking and saying, here's an interesting idea. How could we make this work? Does this work? So even trying to color pick to the ceiling, you see that it's getting much darker than I expected, but it is the same color. Maybe that would create like sort of a shadowy shape that could have stuff on top of it. You can also use the, uh, I don't really like that anymore. Use the lasso tool, which is really good for that. There could be a bunch of these little kind of holes or it could be crevices. We'll take this darker color and we'll put some of those in here. This, you know, a full black. So that the center of this could have these kind of little sections. And maybe there's even like, you know, we could play around with the idea that there's like these steps that get snow. down the opacity of my eraser because it's super intense but you know we could do something like this and maybe there's some form of carvings on the side or something that kind of at this point go upwards which also gather yeah, little bits of snow on them or something So all that to say, like what I'm doing here is just exploring, taking an existing photo, changing it, liking the shapes. That's really all it is. I'm liking the shapes and trying to find a composition and saying, is this something that I'm interested in? Right. Now, this is a photo I took at my house. We could take it and we could put it all different kinds of ways. Right. This is the orientation it was shot in. But we could take this and we can also put it on another photo. I think something like this is maybe more interesting. When we come in with this and we do the same kind of thing. I've done a lot of this with uh, landscape photography though, kind of like you see below. I can come in and hide some of this. Maybe this circle shape is interesting. We'll get rid of this stick that doesn't need to be there. This, this sort of has like a concentric ring that we were kind of talking about before, so we can kind of play up that idea. There's something there, and then kind of taking this green and saying, maybe this isn't a plant that we took a photo of, but like this is a, let's get like an even darker color of it. Hiding some of this. And we'll put a dark object in the foreground, like maybe we're trekking through these massive leaves. And this is part of where we're uncovering this area, like a temple or something. So these can kind of come over. Maybe there's a couple back here that are kind of framing this shape. And this is we want what we want the viewer to see. It's this area, and we're gonna take some of these cones, this brown tone maybe is like the ground. Kind 
kind of lead the, the viewer up and over this. So maybe there's a small little area over here that goes into this thing. And this could be, we'll duplicate the whole layer, shift it, maybe make it darker. So I can only keep this part of it. Okay. You can find something and kind of go from there. That's kind of what I'm getting at. This one's not really leading to a great spot. I took a very quick photo, but you can kind of see what I'm saying. of like taking a photo, expanding on it, and using it as uh, something that works. Just like we did with this one. Right, I think this one was more successful using this image. Uh, same with, like, I'll just delete this one. Where is it? This is another one we had. Picking these two. I think that's inside a group. Making something that can work for you. Turn off that. Thank you. Because I have auto select on them. Like something is wrong. So making something out of existing photos, right? That's kind of what we're kind of talking about today. So we've got a bunch of that stuff, uh, which is great. I think that this is useful for me. I think it's uh, far too bright for what I'm wanting to do. Like I would probably want to come in and really darken this all up and kind of do something that's more of an interior scene. Um, and then about our existing ref, right? So all that was to say like how you can use some of your reference and figure out what you want to do with it. Now this stuff is pretty cool. Uh, I did want to go back very quickly to our Pinterest board and talk about some of our webs, talk about kind of the stuff that you would do with, with these shapes. So I'm going to go and add, and I love this one, save some of these, uh, save this. Now I can go to Google and do the same type of research for everything that I'm doing here. And for a bigger project, um, I definitely would. I would definitely go in and search all that kind of stuff because I think it's it's really cool. Uh, you know, like I might do spider web types. I might say orb weaver web. And here we'll get specific types of orb weaver webs which this is like pretty cool and you get to see some of the uh patterns that it's creating this is like the classic spider pattern right that most people are aware of kind of stuff like this which is awesome so i might take an image or two of these when i find a find one that i really find you know, inspirational i love that there's like this this one has like this white um center which is really cool so we be taking this uh, this group and I have that in the background here is just a general like thing that I want to keep aware of what else as we kind of go through these So I want to search for spiders. So if you're afraid of spiders, now is not the time to look. Spider body types. This is where I'm going to be looking at, and this is also going to break down into how an actual spider functions. So we can make a spider to kind of be an accompaniment to this. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to take elements of this as i'm just kind of looking at this more for just inspiration and visual reference i'm going to kind of come in here I'm going to open up my 
SQ, and we'll get a couple things in here as well. So I can take all these, bring them into Photoshop, use them as that as well. Uh, but what I want to start pulling is some of the reference that I've got now. Uh, I do like this one quite a bit. I like this one quite a bit. And I like this one, the longhorned orb weaver spider. So that's one thing I could do right there is just start searching that longhorned orb weaver spider. Longhorned orb weaver spider. Yeah. So this is a really cool shape. I love how it has all these little designs in the top. Almost kind of skull-like. Also, I really like the inversion shape of that. So that's one thing I want to keep in mind is probably that type of uh, spider. And then... This was one that just kind of gave us a general type. So we, I think the classic ones that we could look at is like a Black Widow's, right? It's a very cool looking spider uh, that we could play around with. The Spider-Man symbol evolution, we could play around with that. Um, but that plus some of what we have over here. I think this to me, the, the spikiness is something that I'm really uh, enjoying over this crab stuff and the orb weaver uh, spider, I think, is really this long horned orb weaver is really cool. So, I'm going to take some reference of that. Just kind of picking the ones that I want. So, copy. All right. I uh, got a question. Uh, is the mood board you'd have just a collection of references and inspirations or any other details about the mood board? It's mostly a collection of references. Uh, and sometimes it's vibes. Sometimes it's specific elements that I want to bring in. Uh, you know, sometimes all, what I'll do is pull in, you know, like let's say I'm, I'm going to search elegant. It's a word that I like about this character. Dresses that pulled up elegant dresses so we could see if there's something in here from a fashion standpoint that could be interesting i kind of like this crossbody thing is pretty cool uh, something that sticks out is unique so i'll search through this nope nothing specific elegant design it happens with that okay, so we see elegant design that just kind of pulls up certain tropes of that you could do elegant car is car some interesting shapes that are going to come out of here So I love car design, I love motorcycle design. Both of those are really great inspirations uh, and can be used for all kinds of things aside from just, um, you know, a car or a vehicle or a prop. some interesting shapes here you know we'll just use the them for what they're they're useful for us they're not specifically always going to be every you know you're not going to get your entire design you're not going to get all in one shot unique architecture this is why i do like pinterest even though everybody uses it at the same time is um it kind of can guide you down a path question from YouTube. How long does it take to make something for Avengers and get it approved and all of that? Months? Typically, yes, a couple months to do a project like that. 
or like an asset for a project like that would take a couple months. probably at a good point where we can go into ZBrush. Uh, the thing that you can always do, of course, is you can always, always, always go back into your references, and your references can evolve, uh, and often they will evolve, not just based on your feedback or what you're wanting to do, but often they'll evolve by uh, other other influences, whether that's your art director, your co-workers, your friends that you say, hey, this, they, you know, they point to you, hey, this might be something you want to check out. Uh, and sometimes it'll even be, or, or definitely will be a director that you're working with, and they'll send you the references, or they'll tell you the references that they want you to work from, uh, or you'll work on something, you'll give them a presentation, and then they'll say, well, hey, you know, this is cool, but what if we brought in X to it, right? And that's kind of where, you know, you can kind of paint around with stuff and try ideas uh, to, to present them and say, is, is this what you're kind of thinking? Uh, or you just take that in and add it to your mood board and start removing mood boards. So for me, a mood board is not like a one and done thing. It's not something I put up and it's something that's there forever. It is something that I work on and then I slowly evolve it over time. So we're jumping back here. Uh, and this is what we've got as our, our reference board. And we also have our Pinterest board. Uh, which I'll go back into again. Of just a couple spider shapes, right? So this is one big one that we're going to work on, and I do kind of like this type of uh, central body that has a broad thing. So something I might do just as like a little bit of a warm up before we get into ZBrush is make a little companion. Well, we'll, we'll do it in ZBrush, but start as a little companion. Little meaning probably going to be a giant spider at some point, but we could definitely start there. So what I'm going to do is we can do this a couple different ways. We can use Z spheres or we can just start sculpting from a sphere. Uh, Z spheres is great because you get a block out the entire character, uh, which is great, but there's not really a way to do that in another way. Um, to do that, there's just not. So what you can do if you've never used Z spheres before is you go in here, select Z sphere, which we have done. And you can drag, I've hit on uh, X for symmetry, and you'll be able to draw, drag and draw out a, another sphere. Now this is kind of like an armature. So what I'm doing right now is I'm basically creating the central point of my body and the back point right here. Use the move, scale, or rotate options to move things around. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is I'm probably gonna take this one and make this quite large because it's gonna be the beginning. And we're gonna make like a little head off of this. And then off of this, we're gonna start putting uh, probably a body. If you hit A, you'll see that it creates something there. Uh, but we're going to start grabbing these and creating some legs. You can interject little pieces into this. Well, you can uh, When you're drawing, you can also shift click, which will uh, do that as well. And I want to make sure that I really actually fully understand spider anatomy before I start making a spider. So we'll just quickly do spider anatomy. Get a nice image that'll probably break this down and this is going to be fine like something like this i don't need like actual images of breakdowns i mean this is nice to have right but you can see all of the eight legs attached to a central column basically from what i understand one two three four doubled and then the face is kind of on the front so we're going to make a central area here and then we're going to build off of that so this Section is going to be this. This is right now when I hit A, what my mesh will look like. Uh, that's because the unified skin is here, I believe. And if I turn this down, it should give us different sizes. And I think I have an interesting thing that's happening there. I think I might be using Dynamesh resolution. I used to lie out on the beach, close my eyes, 
Yeah, it has to use adaptive skin to make this. That means that we need to make all eight of these limbs coming off one thing. Now, here's the thing I don't like. Oh, there's the reason. Here's the thing I don't necessarily love about the spheres or the sketch is that it can create a bit of a challenge in doing certain characters like this. Now, the nice thing is what I could do is I could come in and basically say like, oh, this is where one leg's going to be. Uh, I'm going to take this. Wait for it. Wait for it. They may have crashed on me. One of the things that's the best part about these spheres is that you can go in and you can uh, get the gesture down, which is something that takes longer. If I'm going to sculpt this from a sphere, if I'm going to do anything like that, uh, you know, it just takes a little bit of time. I'm just going to close this down. We'll start straight from the straight from his D sphere again. Oh, looks like we are having an issue with our licenses right now. Okay. One sec, everybody. You're going to lose your sound here for a little bit. You're only going to see me. That's because i got to make sure that uh, our license is so I can get back into ZBrush. Sorry, just doing a quick... IT request. All right, if that doesn't come back, we'll have to find something else to work on today because I was going to be sculpting. So we can always go back and keep working on our Pinterest stuff, which is fine. Uh, we can explore a little bit more, but otherwise we might be a little stuck because I was going to be doing ZBrush. And uh, we use a, a node-based license. So unfortunately, the uh, license that I use is for some reason just revoked. Sometimes we have issues with like a potential power outage where our, our servers are um, or an IP switch up or something like that. But I don't uh, entirely know why that happened because it was working, as you could tell. So one more second. Just launching ZBrush again to see if it will have fixed it. But that would make sense why it crashed. Oh, oh, seems fine. Here we go. All right, let's get this back then. That was weird. Doing the normal setup. It's very possible. It's very possible they are uh, not spider fans. They're like, please, no. All right, so um, we were making a spider. So we can do this with Z spheres. Is anybody interested? Chat, if you guys are interested in Z spheres, I'm happy to show you. Otherwise, I would can make them the other way. Uh, the downside of doing it in Z spheres is that uh, what you could do with characters that have multiple limbs that look somewhat similar is you can sculpt one, and you can then duplicate it across. Uh, I'm going to 
do Z spheres just because it's something I want to I want to do today. Uh, and I also need to go back into StreamYard and share a screen. Oh, I already did that. Great. Let's continue. Z sphere. Cool. Hitting X. We can draw one. All right. This is going to be our like our little tiny abdomen piece will be here. Our large, like I guess, I don't know the terms. I should know the terms, but our, our butt piece will be here. This will be like the spinnerets, which is usually down here. And we can also start, this is where our uh, legs will go. This is where our head would, would and will go. This is ZBrush, yes. Welcome to Nomen Art Jam if you've never been here before. Today what we're doing is we're exploring references for a project. I should open up that previous sculpt, shouldn't I? Yes, you probably should. So this is the character that we're going to continue working on today. We got some more references. Talked about the creative process of exploring shapes, uh, exploring places that we can do that, right? Finding anatomy, finding uh, more references specifically to build on, and then furthering that. And right now, we're going to make a spider. There's a quick, simple one. So if I hit A when I'm doing this, you'll see that it takes the... Uh, Turn this down a little bit. Let's say like 60 fold. Takes the mesh and basically gives you a base mesh based on what your spheres are. Now I can draw these eight limbs, or at least the eight points for the limbs. They're going to go. Can get a little crowded when you're doing Z spheres. Meaning like sometimes you have to draw one and then move it somewhere else where you want it to go. This is generally what it is. The same move scale rotate options apply. So if you're moving, you can move it like that. Cool, because it does give you a lot of what you're already kind of looking for. And when you're drawing, if you hold down shift, it should. Should. Give you the same uh size sphere that was already there so i'm just going to drag another one out on each one of these and pull it out this is the probably the best way for somebody who doesn't know maya for somebody who doesn't know i'm gonna just grab um our pinterest i like this one so i'm going to copy this and put it in our photoshop eyes picking out there put it in here put it over this one maybe for now and then uh, I'm also going to take that spider anatomy image and we'll just grab something like this so many things I have open it's here well, for now we're, we're going to scale this up just so we have this This is going to be a fantasy spider. It's not going to be exactly anatomically correct, but you're going to get a little bit of uh, information at least about some spider anatomy. And I have all this crab stuff here, which obviously crabs are not the same. Um, they're like a sea spider, sort of, without... They're not at all. They just have the same legs. Um, all right, so now I know that these kind of two go backwards. These two kind of go out at an angle, and then there's the fangs at the front. So that's what we're going to work off of. And then the eyes all sit on top. Hello, Justin. Hope you're doing well, man. Justin Fields is here. Friend of no one for sure. So now that I have each one of these, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stretch them out. I want this, like I said, to kind of be this long spindly one i don't want it to have kind of this type of a body so i like this being pulled out i'm going to pull these all the way out all the way out to where they would probably be and even going to scale this body down quite a bit and move it down so it's a little simpler we'll get more into the design of the animal soon insect i guess i don't know if there's a difference between that 
Um, in a sec, but right now, this is what we've got as a base mesh. It is enough to start sculpting if we wanted to. Uh, but what you can do is I'm going to take that and add a, click in the middle of each of these, a joint. A joint here, you see, there's a joint here, and then even another one here. But we're going to get the big one here and here first. So we're going to go here, here, and I'm looking at the reference. How long is this digit? This digit seems to be the shortest. The middle one is about somewhat equal length to this one, but this one seems to be the shortest. So I'm looking at other spiders, looking at other crabs, and saying this is the shortest one. So we'll start here. Profile, I'm going to grab that, I'm going to push it up. And this is like I was saying, this is the huge benefit of working in Z-Sphere is now you can super quickly go from this flat, you know, what we had before, this flattened version, you know, a, a graphical version of a spider in a way, right? But even if I fast forward this afterwards, now it turns into something that feels like it can have a little bit more emotion to it. Pose, which is great. So we can take this, we can move this, figure out where we want these legs to go, maybe even pull them underneath. Right, we can set up a ground floor. If you hit floor, it'll adjust to whatever your lowest thing is. It'll kind of tweak every time you do that. Uh, what I also do sometimes is turn off perspective and just use the actual line here at the bottom of the screen rather than using the floor. All right, so now we'll pull that out and we're going to add some height to some of these. I like how this one, you can rotate them. Also move them. As like these uh, legs that go outward. I like this one having this kind of using the wrong tool I think I was using rotate or something so they're not all going to where I expected them to go so this is kind of what it looks like right now a little tall on some of these so we can pull this down in here do in gaming companies do they use this software for making characters yes they do uh, ZBrush is probably the number one sculpting package used in the industry actually not probably it is the number one so I can grab this other one pull it up Now we can take this if we'd like. We can move things around, you know, if we want to adjust the shape of the body, the size of the body, however we want this to look, right? Our perspective, turn off our floor, maybe. It's a good opportunity for us to do that. I do like how this is like a separate thing. It's kind of cool. So I might put this up and higher. I kind of want to keep this paper. It's losing its size. So I'm kind of trying to balance that. OK, 
And if we wanted to, we can continue drawing Z-spheres, which is awesome. So if this is where we wanted to explore fangs and mouths and eyes, eyes not so much usually, but if we want to create some geometry, base geometry at least for that, we can do that here. Even if it's just a little nub, that'll give us what we need. There you go. That's the base mesh for a spider. It does look like I've welded uh, that section there. I might need to just kind of pull this around where it's not intersecting with too much. It is using Dynamesh here. Uh, so what you can do is you can, I'm gonna save, well, I don't need to save this right now, classic class words, but I, if I hit uh, either Unified or Adaptive, if I hit Make a uh, Unified Skin, you'll see it's made this. This is not what I wanted. If I turn this, I can go into here again, and I can go into Adaptive Skin. So I use Classic Skinning give me this kind of a look turn off classic skinning it'll give me more what I had turn down our density turn this down we can say even like 64 give you a better preview of what you're getting make adaptive skin now nothing happens when you hit this button which often if you are uh ready to sculpt on it you're like oh nothing happened i don't understand and yes you can come in and start sculpting um but this is still a z sphere thing so it's saying hey you know this is still z spheres uh you can come back in and change it when you hit the make adaptive skin it actually puts another one over here which is this one so now i can come in and this is no longer z spheres so this is just a mesh that I can start sculpting on in the, in the ways that you've seen before. So I can come in at this point and start adding a little bit more of that character. I can come in and say, okay, you know, I want this area to be thicker, thicker. And now we can get into the actual grossness of what we want this character to be. Or elegantness, whatever way you think about spiders. Uh, you know, what do we want this to be? It also comes with all those wonderful polygroups built in, which is actually one of my favorite parts of Z spheres, is you can take them and do this with them right away. So I can come in and take this and say, okay, here's our polygroup. Let's group this one. Let's group this one. Let's say, yada, boom group visible and then boom 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 group visible so now i have five or six poly groups that are each individual things i want that to be a different color so that it's clearly visible same with this i don't want it to look like it's part of the legs there we go and now i can save and just say spider this is now a sculptable object which is great right so i can come in and i can start doing all kinds of shapes and do whatever i want on this uh add subdivisions sculpt as as we normally would so i can sculpt in here start building this start pulling this out start really changing this to do whatever we want now you can still use dynamesh on this i can re-dynamesh this object at any time i can z-remesh this object at any time so like let's say we want to do that now it's pretty straightforward you go into geometry you open up z-remesher and you hit z-remesh you'll see this button go across the top and now we have pretty nicely laid out geometry for this character we all we're going to need for that so i'm going to keep this and this instead of this uh and that's pretty much all we need to do the only thing i'm going to do is i'm going to undo i'm going to hit keep groups and i'm going to hit z remesh again that way it does exactly the same thing but it saves me time of not having to 
polygroup all this stuff, which is a huge fan of that. So we'll just quickly save this one instead of the previous one we had. I can come in, hope this stuff, and we'll probably do this at some point because this is something I wanted to do. Uh, but I actually want to get into the queen herself, which is this character here. The reason I wanted to make a spider is not just make a spider and to start getting into those references. But you've seen me do this a couple times on ArcJam, and I often will do sort of like a warm-up. Like a warm-up where we'll spend a little time, um, you know, talking about just getting into the creative process, starting sculpting, and that's kind of what that was for me, and that's a, one of the big elements of it. Uh, but it is actually more for scale. What I mean by that is I'm going to keep this mesh here, but I'm going to load in... Yeah, turn off solo mode, which is the ridiculous body we had in there before, which we will be removing soon. And I'm going to append this spider. Right now the spider is large. Oh my god. Now, this is where we're going to choose our scale. Obviously our human, humanoid, it's not in scale yet, but we get to choose how big these characters are going to be. We could obviously come in here and say, you know, you're incredibly tiny for spider size, which is totally fine as well. And maybe we'll have that. But I kind of love the idea of having some giant ones. If you're a D&D &D player, you know, this is a very common thing to fight giant spiders if you're into, uh, you know, even Tolkien, even Harry Potter, giant spiders very common so we got to have an aragog in here uh for sure i can't remember the name of the one in lord of the rings aragog is harry potter chat what's the name of the spider in lord of the rings remember we need to have one of those in our world so this is probably like one of maybe it's like her big one right and then she's got a bunch of these like tinier ones that are going to be with her so her name sorry i can't remember her name um a bunch of little ones looks like yeah let's just duplicate and then we'll scale this down we'll have a little tiny one in there as well Chelob, yes, thank you. That's one. There's always a, in every fantasy thing. There's always a spider world. There's always a cave or a forest. You gotta go in there. I see that we typed that. that I'm gonna assume that was Adam. Adam, one of our a recruiter, represented representative and host of Noman Things. Massive nerd as well. I was figuring that would be him. He's also here if you have any questions about Noman. So if you have any questions about Noman, and that can be our programs, that can be our uh, classes, administration process. Any questions about that, feel free to ask him. I'm happy to answer what I can. And Adam is also here to, to help you with those as well. And if you want to get in contact, with Noman, uh, Adam can post a form that you can get in contact with as well. So I'm putting these in the scene, yes, because I think that they're cool, but partially because I just want to get in the the vibe, right? I, you know, I've talked about this a little bit before, but adding a pose to a character at the very beginning. Uh, can do a lot for you, right? It doesn't have to be the perfect pose, but adding a little bit of something in there can give you a really good sense of the direction you want to go for something. So I'm going to fill these both with this kind of dark gray color for now, even though I don't think that will be the final color they're going to be. We're going to take this, and these little body pieces that I had ended up cutting, I'm going to delete them. Delete, delete, delete. So this is our fresh. Now, this is probably going to change wildly. So what I like to do at this point is we're going to save this. And we're going to say spider queen one. All right. All right. Here we go. So I'm going to take a little bit of time. I'm going to spend some time adding to her body and adjusting her body. 
Uh, and then the, the spiders are fine for now. They're going to stay. They're going to stay as is. And we're going to probably bounce back and forth and putting them all in the same scene intentionally because I want to be able to bounce back and forth and have them affect each other. So if I find something interesting on her, I can put it in the spider. If I find something interesting in the spider, I can put it in her because they're going to be very symbiotic. That's good for me. Also, I love this uh, thing. The little thumbnail thing is great because it's very Halloween-y. But yeah, so we're gonna make a spooky spider queen, and maybe even get into doing an illustration where it's like it's like looming over her or something like that would be great. Uh, but the pose and the pose and the vibe is something that's very important because you know here's some of the previous characters we had sculpted, just you know based off of random things, right? But putting a character in a pose while sculpting them immediately adds a ton to them. So that's something we are gonna want to do with our queen here, which by the way, we need to come up with a name for. But this will be great because we'll also, I think this should even be bigger. Big girl. I kind of like the idea of even just, again, pose, pose, vibe, early setting yourself up for success. If it's like sitting here, like looming over her, not to eat her, but protective wise. Right, so it's like maybe how do we make this thing feel like it's not obviously we can say she's not afraid of it that's easy but how can we make it feel like it's hers right it's her hand. okay okay a little you get some big old things in here though i'm gonna like tuck back We're going to bounce back and forth probably for the rest of the stream on these two characters. So if you have any questions about the process of what I've gone through, any of the mood board stuff that you're interested in checking out, uh, any of the, anything else just in general uh, that you're interested or, or have questions about, uh, I am happy to answer them. So feel free to ask away. I like these spikes a lot, though. That's definitely something I'm thinking about bringing back. So, you know, even the idea, I'm not going to do them now, but the idea of this sort of, like, general, like, this is too low risk to do what I'm wanting to do, but, like, the idea of that there's a texture to everything. Rather, I don't want anything in this world, in this uh, specific part of the world, to feel textureless, to feel clean. So that's something I'm already thinking about. And you can see that in my references, whether it's color, whether it's the materials that's being broken up, whether it's the multiple things that are intertwining through each other, whether it's the negative space, the circulating patterns, um, I, the spikes. I don't want anything in this character to feel clean, to feel lacking of a, of a shape or of a detail. Definitely something I'm thinking about early. Adding a little bit of gesture to these. Gotta make sure they don't get like too bent. Again, this is a vibe. The whole character, I want them to come through together. This is going to be a key, a key element to this design of this character is that there is consistent theme. And through that theme, it needs to go into all the elements around her, not just her. We'll much on that. Something about like the ones, the spiders that have like the really long legs at the beginning is creepy to me. But there's also something but the opposite. What is this music? Why did I click? It stopped. What was that? Sub Zero. Oh, okay. Let's get some synth wave in here. Oh, I like this already. This is feeling. 
Well, maybe we can find again if you guys are wondering how I get my music because I get a lot of questions. Copy, write, spooky. Copyright free spooky pops. I don't know what this is. It's all by one person though. The problem we have is that um, you know we don't use copyright free music here on the stream. The stream later gets muted, uh, so if you want to go watch it later, you can't. Well, you can, but there's no. No audio. There's something about like I want to. It's like if I mask all this off, maybe even like this off. Um, keep wearing the mask. Push her like here. This how creepy along these legs are. Comparing comparing this, which I think is working, to this just feels. Even the no size has really changed. Feels feels more terrifying to me, and I like the length of that limb. So that is something I'm gonna keep. Now doing so. I have destroyed the rhythm in this leg. So that's something I need to be aware of. So maybe I'll unmask that. Then mask this quickly. And the nice thing about all this is you can quickly mask this because of all the poly groups it made. With the floor, the floor is great. You can also go into, I believe it's under draw, uh, floor size, grid size, and crank that up. Turn off perspective. Oh, that looks like I was going to say. Sometimes the ones that have like the really. Okay. All right, get out of here, thing. of the ones the spiders that have the really long legs here sometimes feel kind of creepy to me as well so i'm going to just experiment with some stuff and we're going to just see how it goes i think that leg should be smaller This is a point where you could definitely, I could definitely benefit from a little more spider research. So it's something we'll do at some point. This is a leg that I want to be huge though. Wouldn't it? Ooh yeah, Arrival. Oh man, I love the aliens in Arrival. It's so weird. Speaking of going the wave, eh? Dune has been delayed. Quite disappointed. A little Dune-y, this noise. I like how this is creating a shape. So as compared to if we go back to this size, right? What we started with. It's kind of a generic spider shape and we're getting a little bit out of that stretching some of these legs and I think that we should start exploring now why am I doing this before I get into the character is a question you might ask the reason I'm doing that is because this is gonna be rhythms and the vibe and the, the things that I'm exploring right now can a hundred percent play into her character Out of the way. 
Spiders are actually one of my favorite things to sculpt because they're so... I really like rhythm and the, the shapes and the, the balance between things, right? And they have such intricate details in them uh, that I, I find it really fascinating in the way they're designed. Now, I am not using... What am I not doing right now? I have been have not been looking at my reference, and this specifically was one of the ones that we liked. This one and this one. So I need to bring in this and some of the spike elements. I don't have to go crazy right now. I don't have to do the, you know, the we're seeing. Uh, but I should absolutely put it in in some way. Question from YouTube. How is she controlling it? That's a great question. If you guys have suggestions, I'm open to that. My initial thought was, I think it should be a very motherly thing. I think it should be like a, she's in control because she's the mama. Maybe, maybe in this story is it possible we got to give her some spidery features i think that's a no-brainer right and if the players or the, the viewer saw them you could always be wondering like is she one of them maybe ooh, maybe this is what she metamorphosizes into or maybe she like transforms into this idea a little on the nose definitely i think they're done before but need to think about uh, so i'm taking these kind of tube like shapes and i'm basically changing the silhouettes of them uh, there was a question about earlier about trying to training our eye for silhouettes and one of the things that i i learned with silhouettes was kind of how to take them and change them and how to adjust them right the one thing that i see in a lot of work uh often is you'll see a shape and it's a, a beautiful it's a beautiful design but the shape itself doesn't have a interesting silhouette right it may have great a great silhouette but maybe it doesn't have great primary forms maybe it doesn't have great secondary forms but the detail inside of it is really really excellent one of the things that i often find is people starting from Face meshes, people starting from spheres, will often make a great shape, but they don't really follow it up with much else, right? And what I would recommend is looking at your shape from multiple angles and consistently evaluating it and asking yourself uh, how you can make it better, right? How you can make it better and not just from that perspective. So one thing, oh, let me just load up another character. I'm going to save this really quick. Um, that i'm going to load up the load tool i think this was the one that we started doing that head on i don't want to load up the head plane that's what i'm going to I feel like i'm about to have to load up the head plane bam this was our our half work rogue we made this is a fine one to work on we'll start on this Okay, this is a character with a ge pretty generic -y face, right? It's an okay silhouette if we turn this off, right? It's relatively flat, but you see it's kind of this stair-step pattern. One of the things that I recommend is thinking about your silhouettes, but not just that. How would I make this head more interesting? You look at the top view. This is almost a perfect oval, right? Now, for a head, that's normal. But when you start getting into creature design, character design, robot design, this is, frankly, not interesting and not acceptable. So what you should be doing is changing that shape. Now, it doesn't have to be drastic, but you can even do a subtle this. Be adding a peak to it. What does that do to our overall character? Right? So a character that before was this. Fine. A fine sculpt, but not interesting to something that is now looking like this. Right? 
it changes the entire character even though it's a silhouette it's a it's a change that you're you're changing that's only effectively changing the top view right but it's changing all these other views now if we go back and do the opposite and we say okay let's do the opposite let's make the front of his head smaller make the back of his head bigger we're going to get a little bit of a mega mind feeling right but what is that doing it's creating a different shape so silhouette one thing i often will do is is make these changes from a direction from a sculpting direction that i don't normally look at and that can it can be a good way to look for places to change things, right? So things that I often look for. Things that I often look for when uh, doing this are going to be a couple things. First, parallel lines. If I see parallel lines that are consistently going like this in a design, it can be horizontal or it can be vertical, right? Either way, that for me is typically a problem unless it is in very, very intentionally part of the design. So I'm gonna come in here, duplicate this for some reason, it's wanting to be a jerk to me. Horizontal or vertical, I don't like that in a design. It's very boring, unless it's intentionally part of the design. And I can give you a quick uh, explanation with that really quickly. Uh, oh, by the way, in case you guys weren't aware, I said this at the very beginning, but if you're joining, the Rookies came out recently with their top schools, and they announced everything. Uh, Nomen placed first, first place in the top, top 50 creative and media entertainment schools in the world. Number one was Nomen. We also ranked as number one visual effects school in the world, number two animation school in the world, and number three game development school in the world. So super pumped about that. Uh, anyways, I was going to the internet. Internet, we were searching for my art station. There's one character that I use in my art station or that I've done who is intentionally only horizontal and only vertical lines, and that's like an IG-88 type of character. Right? So this character here is built on multiple horizontal or sorry vertical lines almost always consistently going up only vertical very little cross and a lot of horizontal lines stacked on each other and that is the design of the character and that's why i say this is something i try to avoid unless you know for example i can probably relatively quickly draw a g88 by just doing this horizontal horizontal vertical this is his little head and he's got a little thing here got a little thing here right i mean this is the character it's not hard to do but that's intentional because the design of the character is supposed to be so simple right has no one ever not placed in the top three uh, i believe the top 50 is a new thing i don't recall saying that i believe we have placed number one visual effects school for four years in a row from what i recall but i'm not 100 percent on that All right, this is that character so this is something that i try to avoid unless this is the point and what you can see exactly this is actually a perfect example of that because IG-88 is a boring looking character. IG-11 is a boring looking character. They're intentionally very stiff. So if you want your character to look stiff, use this. If you don't, you need to start adding in. This is what I kind of did and what some of them will do, right? Adding in a couple things here and there to break up the design to give it a little more humanoid side to it. Okay. That's the first thing I look for. Second is I look for 50-50s. So if something is I know there's a way to turn off sticky keys, but I can't remember. Something is 50-50. This, this distance, this distance are the same. That is boring. You should take it. Squash it in some way, right? Take the middle and push it up. Take it and push it down. Just do something to break that up. That's the first thing. So the other thing I start looking for is like you were saying with the head certain areas of the shapes that are too consistent, I will I'll try to fix that. 
So it's something I keep kind of in the back of my, my mind is, is one other area of that. So this, we could do this one, right? Relatively simple. It doesn't have to change everything. It doesn't have to be that drastic either, but it does create you know, a more interesting shape. And even from here, what you're seeing, like when I'm doing changing this shape to a shape that kind of looks like, you know, we'll say it's a triangle. That's fine, but add forms on top. Make forms intersect. Now create a more interesting shape by creating a bulge in that shape. Take a form, all right? This form looks very flat, so now I'm cutting angles off of the form and I'm adding subtle variation to the top of the form. So what went from a very simple oval can be a more complex shape. And does that overall change the design? Yeah, of course it does. But drastically, it still can be the same character. It's just more interesting. It's going to reflect light more interesting. It's going to speak to the character a little bit more, right? If I want his head, I'm like, oh, his head got too small. Okay, I make his head a little bigger. Profile, same kind of thing. If I see something from a profile view and I look at it and it's very consistent, I'm going to change that. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to pull this up. Get a little angle to this. Where's the peak? Is it supposed to be in front? Is it supposed to be in back? Is it supposed to slope back like this? This is kind of interesting that these lines... This is not a horizontal line. Now, I don't, when, I, when I give you this illustration here, it's not saying you shouldn't have parallel lines. Parallel lines can be great. The idea of you know a line connecting and going through multiple things is fine. The idea of a line connecting through multiple things is fine, as long as it's not the entire character doing one motion, right? So the idea that maybe this knot, this nose, and this mouth, and even this chin can all have similar angles to them is not a problem. I want to add a little bit more interest to it. Here we can go from something that feels generic, right? A generic face. We can add a little bit more to it from that. And that's a little explanation about how you can go from something that's relatively simple, your design, anybody's design that you see, and just add a little bit of a push to it, right? And that's going to go across the entire character. And that's kind of what we're doing now, right? In reality, what we're doing is we're taking something here, In the very beginning is this right and we're going to push it so where what is not working what is boring about this these shapes are too consistent they're too round right they're too straight i said that i want this character to not to, to never feel uh, like it has one area uh, that's lacking detail right so that means even in these shapes not that i want everything to be this crazy um move back and forth but i want the shape to have a little bit of interest to it so i'm coming in here get rgb on I will turn off color though so I'm coming in here and i'm just adjusting the shapes subtly so what am i looking for right now this line I'm connecting this line here with this line. And I'm also trying to create a little bit more of an interesting shape. Now, an idea that I just kind of thought of was how maybe we could use a coffin shape. It's a reoccurring theme. Now, I don't want to just go straight up and be like, look, we put a coffin on the back of it. Right? That's cool. That will work and it will be a very graphic shape. But maybe there's a subtler way to put that in there. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. If anybody has questions, I'm happy to answer them. Mm -hmm. 
the back and butt of this thing and saying, let's add a, if we're going to have this very kind of almost straight, I kind of like the idea of it being straight on top. Maybe the bottom needs to be full of these like wrinkles. Of detail. Areas of rest and areas of detail. If this is going to be simpler, this area should be busier. You need to create a spinneret of some type. Now, normally I don't really listen to like synthwave and stuff like this, but for some reason this is really helping me. It kind of puts me in a zone. Listening to music, watching video, movies, videos, watching movies, YouTube videos, um, can be a really effective way to um, kind of put yourself in a space, right? Listening to a, a soundtrack of something listen to a soundtrack but we will get our music muted i'm gonna avoid that in the front view this is feeling very flat on the top so i might come in here with like an inflate brush and say maybe some area in this just needs a little bulk now it feels flat and it feels small but again what if it's this big what does that change what is this what are some of these forms doing Maybe I want this leg to like go in front of this thing. Almost like so large that it has to go over it. You can create a music playlist to have mind hack your state of mind. Yes, exactly. So like it's almost built this way, like it's slotted in here, maybe. Oh boy, just thanks the did it again. love the spiders in Zelda. In Zelda with the big skulls on them. That was something I was considering with this. Not, not specifically skulls. Well, it was. But here's another thing is we can also just play around with inflate. Like, I like that this is kind of thin, but there's something about just the size, just adding a lot of size to it. I'm just playing around with basically mashing this thing with the inflate brush points and saying does this work oh, odd the thinness of that leg is kind of interesting too that's another thing that i often do uh similar we'll remove these because we don't need that is if something is normally like an oval shape like an arm right an arm or a leg is typically kind of this shape right i'll take it and I'll break it into a shape like this, or I'll break it into this type of a shape, or you know, a shape that's got a little bit of a flare to it, right? A tube is fine. It's effective at communicating the form, but it's not as interesting of a shape. It doesn't catch light in the same way. We gotta get into this girl. This, this, even though this is working, Like 
the idea of it almost. Warning, the activities depicted in this video are strenuous and highly physical in Ooh. nature. They should not be attempted without first consulting your doctor. Oh, yeah. Since they can also become violent, you might also seek advice from a psychiatrist, clergyman, or criminal attorney. In any case, we accept no responsibility for any harm you do to yourself or to others after Let viewing this quickly tape. work out Whatever video. Happens, it's not our fault. We didn't do spikes. I talked about that earlier, and I've been spacing it ever since. I need to add a spike to this. I need to add a spike to this for sure. It's like coming off the back. Play around with this, but I'm not sure on it. I don't necessarily want to just straight up rip off the, uh, orb weaver we were looking at, right? I do like the double spikes. An interesting little thing, but I think it needs more. So what we'll probably do is getting in. I could spend all stream, which we'll probably spend most of a stream sculpting the spiders and figuring out what the design will be. But just getting a little bit of the flare that I'm wanting into it, I think will help. That texture that I was talking about. Removing the perfectness, removing the everything needing to feel like it's made that way. I kind of like how it goes back in on itself. Ooh. Now we gotta get this little bottom area down. Let's add that to that. from the front view what does this front view look like if this is it, i'm thinking about the idea of this illustration where it's kind of like this or this right and she's got to be like enveloped by this thing in a way now that 
it would, it's going to be difficult to figure that out because she would be very small in it. Um, but I'm kind of liking the idea of that. Some of these tubes, I think, need to be adjusted so I can come in and like smooth or just use clay buildup on one side, for example. Kind of if you ever looked at a crab leg, a crab leg is not perfectly cylindrical. Right, they're very capered. Adding a bit of a taper to all this may help us a lot. Adding a taper also lets you put interesting places for not taper for a bulge which is great what do we got oh star wars lo-fi beats ready to study relax it nice are these royalty free i don't know if i can play them if they're not royalty free We'll mute the stream later. Carve in the back of this. names at some point too. Part of me feels like it should be wider, you know? Into like a crab shape where the body's bigger. Sort of feel like you know sometimes you work on something and over time just like feels like it's getting really compact. Maybe that's the point, right? Maybe is it supposed to feel compact? This feels like it's all perfectly spaced out. Whereas this feels like it's long and thin and long. I think I actually like that more. They're both good. Right? This one feels more natural. This one feels a little awkward and not awkward but it feels stretched and i think that's what i'm actually liking about it all right let's see let's see all right let's jump in here <clears throat> this is our, our model to have these other ones there. Make a, okay, document. 
new dock. We'll save that. The other one is the, the spider we just worked on is in the background. It's in another file. Uh, this is the paint job that we had done. So now that we have some ideas from our thing, we've got a kind of a companion started for this, which I think is great. I have some ideas for where this should go. First thing I'm going to do. Is that a cube? A pin, insert a cube. The front view of this is okay. The profile is awful, so we are going to need to work on this quite a bit. I was thinking about sculpting this all out of a cube, pulling it out, maybe getting the costume going. If I bring in a base mesh, it's going to take me a little time to get the proportions of the base mesh. I'll need it eventually, though. get to the faster result with just the cube. I need to rebuild it later. I'm going to go two things. We're also going to keep this. We'll duplicate the cube. We're going to import the asset. This is my characters designer thing. You guys don't always see this, but characters designer toolkit. Uh, these are a lot of the base meshes that I use. Um, base man with shoes is often one that you'll have seen me use. Shoes. Yeah. Oh, whoa, that's weird looking. Uh, we can also go in and load all other assets or older assets. So, I'm trying to think of what I could be loading. of what I've done before. Same as I don't think had a body inside. I have a couple bodies that I could send, could load in. Uh, as a base mesh that I don't need to sculpt up. That's kind of one of the things that I'm considering is like, is it worth bringing in something I've done before uh, to save myself a little bit of time? And I'm not sure where they all are right now, to be honest. Try loading a tool from there. So we have some base female bodies. Quite a long time ago. And so I will use this. need the eyeballs I don't even need all the higher resolutions so I'm just gonna go down to like a lower res probably like here and uh, clone this that's what we're working on here uh, insert this this female body she's much larger 
this is something I'll do somewhat often, especially if I'm working on a character that I've already. You know, the intent of this is not right now to make a really. This is a very minimal part of the design. Working from a base mesh, especially something if you sculpted it before or worked on it before, is not cheating. I get a lot of questions about, are you cheating if you do this? You know, Now, if you're a student and you're learning, maybe it's not the best idea to sculpt from something if you're still trying to learn. I would definitely suggest that you learn how to do it in another way. What it'll do is it'll give us a quick, you know, part of the character that we don't have to sculpt. Now, as comparison, if I were to take, you know, the character, any of the characters that we've done and sculpted them, it just will take quite a bit longer to get to this point, just so I can sculpt more anatomy on it. And that's not really the point of this exercise or of this thing in general, right? This is now, now I can start sculpting this character. Now I am going to adjust it, absolutely, and I'm going to delete some of the parts that I don't need. Oh, Jesus. Uh, I'm going to delete a, uh, <laughs> higher subdivision levels for sure. I'm going to save this as a new object because it looks like it was not enjoying whatever I was doing to it. Lower? Aha, lower still there. So that's also good. I could start from that. I like some of the details that are in this, specifically like things in the hands that I don't have to re-sculpt. It's nice we can continue from here. So I am going to hide this. Or when I say hide, I'm going to basically push it inside the body. So we have... I want the mesh there because I might actually use it. Oh, that's creepy. Here we can start adjusting our body shapes. I was kind of doing this thinner, more frail uh, frame to begin with. You see how small those shoulders were? Like if I bring this in now, this is kind of where that hit us with this body. I do want to get into some posing though. I'm interested in the idea of how this is going to play with this, right? What does this character look like with this? How much taller should she be? How much shorter should be she be? Right, all that kind of stuff that I want to kind of play into. There's this kind of tapering element to all the spider stuff that I'm really interested in playing with. So that is something 
that I think could be interesting. Let's break this. I don't know if this is going to smooth. If I rotate that, if it's going to stretch. Yep. fill this with that color. It was already had a color. dark in there. Something about the idea of the fingers being a little longer. It could be nails, it could be fingers, it could be all kinds of things we could do. That feels like something that would work well. If I want to pose those hands at some point, right now they're not, they're not, they're not really working for us. And this is actually, I wouldn't say it's worse, but it's definitely not helping the pose. doing with a pose for this finding symmetrical poses that fit a character can be difficult it feels natural to them It's something that I often spend a lot of time with, even like on a character, uh, you know, like a Samus character, like I spend a lot of time adjusting the general vibe of this pose, like a lot of time over and over and over. And it's not like one thing that happens at the very beginning, right? I'll try to get, slowly work up to something, even like with these characters, these were posed, posed very early on, but I would have to re-sculpt huge sections of these to, um, to work on them in, the, in the future. 
this is the early version of that pose and this is like the late version of the pose. start getting some of that inspiration from the other spiders and I gotta start working on that head how the head interplays how this is all gonna start interplaying like uh, I think the top Something like a little um, spiky element I think can be cool Before it was almost like plant-like, and I think now it's carapace-like is probably the way it's going to go. And this is just a disaster from a profile. First we were doing plants, I think, and that was just like maybe flowers and roses and plants and now it's like oh, it's like death and spider webs and definitely like taking a little bit of a different direction. Uh, I am gonna turn the paint back on I'm gonna paint in white without any sculpting on to kind of mimic what we had, had before and maybe at this point we can start getting uh, some of what we had here so why is it not working? Just playing with the idea of some color breakup, and I'm wanting to kind of get some of the similar rhythmic patterns. same floor now. Just kind of drawing lines to kind of guide the eye up, the eye up and down through the body. So that's why what a lot of kind of what you're seeing is almost just uh, lines that will go like uh, this. I 
I'm just kind of I'm drawing those to see if something's working. Uh, and then sometimes I'll just color a big section and color a big section and create lines and then draw lines between them. Uh, and that's me just kind of that happy accident. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for finding, you know, something that is going to work. Like I know that I initially had, uh, you know, this sort of line gesturing in and these lines gesturing out. And so how can I take that initial idea and run with it? What can it go? What can it do? What can it go? Like the idea of a character like this, like maybe she would always wear gloves. I think if we had talked about the idea of her doing uh, transforming or metamorphosizing or something like that, which I think is a always a fun creaturey, gross idea, that maybe she, her hands are actually disgusting. They're they're like they're like the end of a spider, maybe. So that's something we could explore what that could look like and so she always wears these gloves they're kind of like these See, we could do this. I think I'd like the idea of like, like come to me. It sound like it for some reason this reminds you of Rammstein. So I'm definitely not going to keep this as a whole skin tight piece, but just kind of using that as a, an initial idea.
Oh, small spider egg sacks. That's disgusting. I love it. This part, this part of the song. Bum, 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 bum. met my children. just about to wrap up our stream for today but I think we got to a good a pretty good point you know we found some cool reference we talked about design and we got some good stuff here that I still need to tie in like this colors and this you know the, that's something I'm not really playing with right now the costume is still very skin tight so that's something we'll need to figure out But uh, we got a bunch, of, I think we got a lot of really good reference today. And uh, I feel like I have a pretty good idea of where this is going to start going now. Especially building the companion, like building the spider companion. Which, by the way, we need a name for still. So if you guys have any ideas, I'm not a good namer. Uh, I am open to hearing them. Uh, yes, and also join us Friday with Director of Education Max Dayan. Um, and Adam Hartel, they'll be discussing basically our unique approach to education and like how our curriculum is built for careers in the entertainment industry. So please check that out. That's on Friday uh, here on this channel or these channels. Uh, so definitely check that out. And then of course I want, I got to shout it out one more time. We did get called out in, as the, in the rookies as being the uh, number one creative media and entertainment school in the world, which is amazing. Number one out of 50. Uh, so super honored to be a part of that. So thank you all very much for joining today's art jam. It was definitely a fun one. I'm looking forward to building on this project throughout the rest of the month. So if you are interested in watching this project, kind of get to a, a bit of a closer or more of a final uh, as we push through this and get into the illustration side, which I think will be great uh, as we close in on Halloween, uh, tune back in. Next week, uh, we'll be here every Wednesday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, for Noman Art Jam. So thanks a bunch, everybody, and I will see you all next week. See ya.